I can't think of a better use of, of an archive than to be used by another scholar. And my general attitude is making work is I can do whatever I want as long as it's in the attempt to be creative. My name is Nathan Coley. I'm an artist based in Glasgow. I'm a graduate of Glasgow School of Art. I exist in the art world and I make sculptures, so I guess artist is as good a description as any. I've been making work for maybe 25 years. There's an attitude and there's an interest which is consistent with my work. I guess the ideas manifest themselves in many ways. I think of myself as essentially someone who makes objects and very often the, the sculptures are driven by the existence of a ready-made. And that may be that the context that the work sits in is the ready-made or it may be a piece of a conversation I heard in a taxi or it may be something historical from the place that I'm making the work from, rather than it being fabricated in a precious, rarefied, classical studio context. I think people would describe me as being an artist that's interested in architecture and public space, social conceptualism, ideas of faith and how that manifests itself. I'm interested in the work sitting on top of the public or with a consciousness of there being an audience. Um, and I think when the work acknowledges that, it can really kind of transcend its circumstances and its origins. So, yeah, I mean, I guess with every invitation, I'm initially always, well, flattered. It's nice to be asked. You know, we all want to be loved. I was initially interested in the idea that here's a building which has a very particular use, which is both to, to house knowledge and information, but also to be used by particular people, by academics and students. And then very quickly I became conscious of the nature of the architecture, which is brutalist modernism, mid 20th century architecture was perceived as being the, the answer to, to post-war social problems and that some sort of master planning of how and where we live would be the, the salvation for all of us. You know, there's a huge discussion about whether modernism failed or not. Here was the opportunity to try and find a starting point within the building, both formally and conceptually, so that's been both an interesting challenge and very fruitful at the same time. Hopeful that there would maybe be somewhere in this building of ideas some thoughts that I could appropriate, that I could steal from, you know, or retune or uh, recontextualise. Here was an opportunity for me to make a new text work, which on this occasion would be very site specific. I think of all the previous ones that I've made as being driven from a certain time and with a certain context, but they're not site-specific. They come from existing phrases, whether that's a line of a popular song or some existing literature or something that a taxi driver says to me or a conversation with someone in the pub. The, the words are never mine. It's not me that's the poet. I kind of set myself the brief that there must be some words in this institution that could be mine. In a passing conversation, somebody told me that the, there was an archive of Ian Hamilton Finlay correspondence. I'm a huge fan of his work. I, I met him a couple of times. 
I see of him as being a kind of conduit between my generation and the, you know, a sort of an international context that came before us. I think Little Sparta is one of the key uh, artworks of the last century. And I guess I was interested in uh, somehow getting to read more about his personality and his um, less public um, existence. So I very studiously uh, spent five or six days reading the uncollated, uncategorised boxes of correspondence. And I think I'm comfortable with the idea that here's a new text work by Nathan Coley that shakes the hand of Ian Hamilton Finlay, who's still around us and still amongst us. I'm interested in that now and I think I'm interested in how that will be read in 50 years when I'm no longer here and uh, it becomes part of the archive of the history of the building as well. And then this recording becomes part of the archive and somebody ends up making a work about the words that I say and it's, you know, it kind of carries on. <laughs>